Hello guys, today I'm going to show my solution for scene 3 in factory IO. The task of scene 3 is simple. If you press the fill push button, the tank should fill for 8 seconds. If you press the discharge button, the tank should discharge for 8 seconds. I wrote my code in function block diagram and the code can be used on all PLCs because it's according to the PLC language standard. So you can also program the exact same code in for example an Alan Bradley PLC or a Siemens PLC or any other PLC. I programmed the code in OpenPLC editor and it runs on the OpenPLC runtime. You can find more info about OpenPLC in the subscription and in my previous video if you want to. So let's get into my solution. First of all I changed the names of the variables in factory IO so it's logical for me. You don't have to do this, but it's a good practice to have some kind of structure in naming your variables. The green push button is called fill in factory IO. I will change that in I underscore PB fill. The I stands for input, PB stands for push button, and fill is the name I gave to this specific push button. I will also do this for the discharge button. The push buttons have lights in them. These are outputs for the PLC. So I call them Q light push button fill and Q light push button discharge. The display is also an output and I call this Q display for this scene. I also change the name of the valves. After changing the names we are going to set up the connection between factory IO and open PLC. The communication between the two is with the Modbus protocol. To set the communication up you have to choose the driver by pressing the F4 key. And in the drop down menu, we are going to select Modbus TCP IP server. We make sure the IP address is the same as we set up in OpenPLC in the previous video. And we set the digital inputs to 8, and we also select 8 for the number of digital outputs. For the register inputs and outputs, we will set it to 2. We don't need all the inputs and outputs. All the connections are already made for us by default in factory IO except the display. The display output is from the type integer or int. This is also indicated by the orange square. We will discuss the data type integer when we get to the programming. We set up the connection to OpenPLC runtime, but nothing happens here. That's because we have to write our logic, upload it to OpenPLC runtime, and set the PLC to the run state. First off, we open a new project and start to declare our inputs and output variables the same as we did in factory IO. Before we start programming, I would look at the process of the machine and states it could be in. So the machine can be in three states, doing nothing, in the filling state or in the discharging state. I create two variables of the type pool for the states, one called filling and the other discharging. I don't bother to make a variable for doing nothing because you don't have to set any outputs later for it. To change a state from doing nothing to one of the others, you have to think about the conditions to get in that state. For example, we know that we have to press the green push button to get in the state filling. And that state filling should only be active for 8 seconds. I also don't want that you could discharge when you are filling, so I also have to add this to the conditions. First, we are going to add some comments to the code we want to write. A senior software engineer at Volvo once told me that the most important thing about the code is the comments. Then we are going to write the code to set the status to filling. So one of the conditions is that we press the push button to fill. So we drag it from the variable list to the grid. In this case the variable filling is an output in the meaning if we want to change the state of the variable. If the connection is not to the left you right click on it and set the variable as an output. We also don't want to fill if the installation is already discharging. So in other words, if the status is not discharging, we can proceed to fill. So we're going to the library on the right and drag the not function block to the left. 
and connect it to the variable discharge. So now we can use an AND port to connect both signals. Only if both signals on the AND port are true, the output of the block will be true. But I would strongly recommend to use a rising trigger block to detect the push button is pressed. In 114 seconds I will explain why you should always do this. So if you would just connect the output of the end port to the state filling, it would only work if you press the button and the machine is not discharging. But we want that the state filling stays active for 8 seconds and then is reset to false. To do this we'll use the reset set function block. We already used set and reset in a previous video. So we have two function blocks to do this. The set reset block and the reset set block. If you hover the mouse here, the PLC editor will give you some basic info about the block that is selected. The block works as follows. If the S signal of the block is true, the output of the block will be set to true. The output will stay true even when the set signal becomes false again. If you set the R signal from reset to true, the output will be set to false. The difference between the set reset block and the reset set block is the priority. If both the S and R signal on the port are active, the set reset block will give priority to the set, and with the reset set block, the priority will be given to the reset. To reset the filling state, we will add a timer of 8 seconds. In this case, we will use the TON timer. TON stands for Timer on Delay. The in connection of the block is the trigger for the timer to start. We want to start the timer if the machine is in state is filling, so we use the variable filling as an input to the in connection. On the PT connection, you have to set the time how long it will take before the output signal will be set to true. We will create a variable constant. You have to set the data type to time by using the T and specify the value and the unit of time, in this case 8 seconds. We connect the output of the TAN function block to the R connection of the reset block and we will simulate our logic for the filling conditions to see how it works. So we're now in the simulation. You will see already one connection of the end port is true. This is because we are not discharging. We will now force the signal of the push button to true and back to false. This is the same as pressing it in factory I.O. The set block will activate filling and the timer will start. After 8 seconds, the TON timer will reset the reset set function block. The variable filling will be false again and the timer will also stop. Now I will explain what the rising trigger block is doing here. So output connection Q of this block will only be high for a brief moment when it detects a change from state false to true. Let's delete it and talk about a situation you can encounter in a production environment when you don't use the edge detection for the push button. Let's say Billy is the operator of this machine. His job is to stay with the tank to make sure the water is clean. To make sure Billy stays at his post, we made our logic that you have to press the push button every 8 seconds to fill the tank. This logic works fine. The first few days are quite boring for Billy and he came up with an idea. He used a small screwdriver to keep the start push button pressed in. Now Billy can go to the break room and go get a coffee. He knows if he's back in time, for a minute or two, the tank will be filled. The water is almost always clear, so it works fine. Until one day, Billy was distracted in the break room by a good looking co-worker and gets back too late. The tank is overfilled and the tank has broken due to the high pressure. Billy has a bad time. To make sure Billy cannot do this, we add an edge detection. It does not matter if it's a rising edge or a falling edge in this case. So when you keep the button pressed, the signal will only be true on the edge. This will make it more difficult to tamper with installation. If you think this would not happen in the real world, you are wrong. The worst persons are the maintenance technicians. I should know, because I was one. To finish the code and test it in factory I.O., we should program what would happen if the variable filling is true. So the fill valve should be activated and the lamp on the push button should be light up. So we can just connect the variable filling to Q discharge valve and Q fill light to the variable. A good practice is to set the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right. Now we can generate a code file that we have to upload to the PLC to run it. Please note we only program the filling conditions. So let's save it and now we're gonna go run open PLC. Now it's running. 
To interact with it, you open any good web browser. So we're going to this address to interact with PLC runtime. I made a shortcut to it. Now we go to programs and add our program to open PLC runtime. If you still remember for the first video, these are the settings for the connection to factory I.O. Now we set the PLC to run. You normally still have factory I.O. open and set up like earlier explained in the video. Now we press play and if you press the start button, the tank will fill for 8 seconds. We covered a lot in this video and I would like to challenge you to program the discharge conditions. You can use a lot of the code of the fail conditions, but be aware that the discharge push button is normally closed. So the input is true when the push button is not pressed and false when you press it. In the next video I will explain how to program the discharge conditions and how to program the display that shows the time. If you don't want to miss the videos, consider subscribing.